at the anterior sternoclavicular joint capsule, one of the reasons why we treat this joint capsule is because it refers pain in through the medial aspect of uh, the mediastinum, the sternum, the sternoclavicular joints. And this tissue can be influential in holding the clavicle in an inferior and anterior portion. Now, if you remember in the introductory video, I talked about breathing techniques. And this is going to be a perfect technique where we incorporate breathing techniques into, into, this, uh, into our manual techniques. Now, when our, ther when our patient takes a deep breath in, what happens is that the clavicle rolls and glides superiorly and posteriorly. And when they exhale out, the clavicle rolls and glides anteriorly and inferiorly. Now, since her clavicle is already in an anterior and an inferior position, we need to get it more into a balanced state by, by sort of influencing it or getting it to cooperate more in the direction of a superior posterior direction. So working with this tissue, we like to come underneath the clavicle. So you want to be inferior to the clavicle. We don't want to be superior to the clavicle. So you want to be inferior to the clavicle right where that medial portion of the clavicular head attaches onto the sternum. Now there's a couple of hand placements for this technique depending on uh, the severity of the decreased range of motion or the severity of the increase in densification of these tissues. We can utilize either just the thumbs together to get very point specific or for those tissues that have, been in, that have been injured for a long period of time and that are in a chronic state, what we can do is we can actually match our thumb along the shaft of the clavicle. We can have the tip of our thumb right at the medial end of the clavicle. And basically what we're doing is we're just increasing surface contact area with the clavicle because then we can utilize uh, the placement of our other hand right over top of the thumb so that we can use our body position and our posture in order to load down into that tissue to influence it more into that superior posterior position. So what we're going to instruct our patient to do is that I'm going to get her to, when it comes time for the treatment, we're going to get them to inhale as fully as they can, full lung capacity. When they get full lung capacity, they're going to stop and they're going to hold it for as long as they can comfortably. We're going to be monitoring the tissue while they're holding their breath. When they need to exhale out, then they can exhale out fully. They can inhale again fully, full lung capacity. We're going to run through this about two times for this video. And then we're going to reassess the clavicle and see what change we've made to it. So with the clavicle, I'm going to have my thumb along the shaft of the clavicle. I have my thumb right at the medial portion of her sternoc sternoclavicular joint. I'm going to have my hand here so that I can use my posture, my bio biomechanics in order to influence that clavicle into a superior posture direction. What we're going to do is we're going to get her to take a deep breath in as fully as she can. So deep breath all the way in. When she gets to the top, I'm going to make contact slowly load into that reciprocal tension of the tissue, cooperating with the tissue. And I'm just going to hold it at this point. And we're going to monitor the changes in the tissue while she holds her breath here. Remember that these are slow techniques. And as she exhales all the way out, I'm actually going to hold the clavicle in the position that we got it to when she inhaled the first time. And then we're going to get her to breathe all the way back in again. As she breathes all the way back in, I'm going to take up the slack, increase a little bit of compression and force into that tissue, still cooperating with it, still respecting that reciprocal tension of the tissue. We're not loading through the barrier. We're just matching it. Again, just holding it here. And 
there's not a lot of pressure that I'm utilizing through my right hand and my thumb. It's basically there just to increase surface area for contact with my left arm. The majority of the force of vector is through the left. And as she exhales all the way out, I'm going to slowly come back off. And then we can reassess the movement of this clavicle. So again, index finger on the inferior portion of the sternoclavicular joint, thumb on the superior portion. Let's have you take a deep breath all the way in. We've got some roll and glide, and all the way out. The clavicle doesn't move as inferiorly as it did beforehand, and then deep breath in again. And the clavicle actually moves more superiorly than it did in the initial assessment. And that's a treatment for anterior sternoclavicular capsule ligamentous tissue.